Hey everybody, Ali Madawi here, and I am honored to be on the Prosperity Show. And today we are talking about branding. We're talking about a lot of different ways that you can actually capitalize and create something for yourself without A, breaking the bank, and two, to have the right philosophy and mental attitude. Really looking forward to today and uh, really excited about having the opportunity to be here with Prosperity. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you your strategic partner, Ali. Ali, how are you doing, my man? I am living the dream. It is 6.30 in the morning and I'm ready to rock and roll. Thank you so much. And thanks for showing us how it's actually done. Now, viewers, I've just brought in Ali. Um, and like he says, it's 6.30 in the morning. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that we don't actually um, you know, take account of. And sometimes you might find yourself struggling to catch up with your client's work. You might struggle to brand yourself in the process and also have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So that's the reason why we bring in experts like Ali that are in the trenches doing it all so that they can show you how you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Ali, how can... Uh, how, how do you become somebody's strategic partner there? Well, before I do, I do have to speak to your audience for a second. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be in the world. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to do Prosper. And let me just tell you while you are a smart individual. Um, uh, Prosper, we spoke before the show, and I want to make sure that it is publicly known. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for people like yourselves and thank you for everything that you put forward uh, to the audience that you have and to the marketplace as uh, the world needs more positivity, more joy, more happiness, more inspiration, but more importantly, facts on the how to do the things that we would like to have in our lives. And you, sir, through your interviews, through your platforms and everything that you do, I started with your Instagram and then I went to your YouTube and then I went to your Facebook and the more I was looking, I was in awe, I was in uh, such a, a sense of respect to everything that you do. So thank you so, so much. And I am so excited that not only our paths have crossed each other, uh, but uh, for the many, many years that I'll personally be learning from everything that you do. And uh, anyone that is watching this, I am already uh, certain that you are a champion. Uh, so do not step away from a, a, a prosperous path that Prosper has already created for you. So I just wanted to make sure that it's publicly acknowledged. Now let's talk about uh, the how. You know, uh, the, the, the one thing that, that I'm asked about all the time, uh, whether it's in, in seminars or whenever I'm doing consultations or whatnot, uh, is people ask me, what is the one thing that I can do to have success? So what is the one thing that I can do to have momentum? What is the one thing? And, you know, my favorite thing to say, and I learned this from John C. Maxwell, is my uh, the, the one thing you need to know is there is more than one thing you need to do to actually be successful because you know everybody assumes that if i just have that secret formula of the one thing ali is doing um there is more than one thing and there is more than just one time and there is more than just uh, one process it, it has taken me 10 years in the business space to arrive to where I am at right now. Now, when most people say, man, I'll do anything, I'm like, give me 10 years of your life. They're like, what? Give me 10 years of your life and you can have what I'm having. And you can understand that, you know, everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants to have things out of life. Not everybody is willing to actually put the work forward. Um, uh, so, so me personally, um, I've, I've been blessed. Uh, to have um, mentors around me who are willing to kick my butt, who are willing to tell me, hey, you're not doing enough, who are willing to, um, um, even my parents, to, to say, get over yourself, get up, do it again, um, and, and, and not allow me to get in a circumstance where I'm just sitting back and saying, oh, poor me, it's not working out. Who's going to help me? Who's going to support me? Um, and it developed this, this, this grid attitude of, okay, whatever you do, 
I'm going to try to outwork you, not in the sense of competition, but in the sense of I'm going to give more than you have created. Um, uh, I'm going to make it more valuable than you have made it. I'm going to just live on a st this mindset of abundance. And uh, I read a lot. I study a lot. I watch a lot of videos. I, I spend probably 60% um, of my day just feeding my mind, studying, studying, studying. If, if I weren't, uh, I wasn't with you right now, my usual routine, first thing, first thing in the morning, as soon as my eyes open up, I, you know, take a 12 ounce of water, put some uh, earbuds in my ear, and I actually, for 30 minutes, just meditate. Just meditate. Let whatever positive thoughts come to my mind. Sometimes I, I, I just smile to myself. Sometimes business talk takes over and I have to fight it and refocus again. Um, and then immediately after that, quick bite, get back into my earbuds and listen to an audiobook as I'm walking around preparing breakfast for my wife or, you know, taking care of our two month old son, uh, um, you know, whatever is needed. So, um, you have to have a lifestyle of winning of, um, um, humility though, uh, because a lot of people could mix this attitude of winning of, Oh, I am the best. I'm the greatest. And you can't tell yourself that it's great to have affirmations, but it's better uh, to let your actions show how great you are, meaning that you you have the will to do it, uh, but the humility to say, hey, I don't know how to do it, can you help me? The humility to say, I'm not good at everything and I need to study some more. The humility to um, uh, let someone else teach you. The humility to identify in other people that might not be business savvy to teach you something new, and it always happens. Um, and, and, you know, before I get lost in my world, um, of, of talking about so many different things that I love talking about is, you know, when I mean, uh, what I mean about allowing someone else that might not be business savvy teach you understand as an entrepreneur, what you do is you solve problems. That's what you do. You find a problem, you solve it and you monetize it, right? So everyone that is reaching out to you saying, I need your help. They're actually teaching you. They're giving you a business opportunity. They're saying, I don't know how to do this. Can you figure it out for me? And I'll pay you for it. So you have to be humble enough to give every single person an opportunity. My pet peeve is when uh, someone gets uh, uh, to experience success at whatever level that is, at whatever form that could be, and they start being selective. Oh, I only work with the select few. I only work with people who are willing to invest minimum X amount. I'm only willing to work with top producers. I'm only willing to work with high end tickets. That's great and all, but I'm here to tell you, you know, if you don't humble yourself, something that's going to happen, uh, the, the, the law of the universe, God, higher power will actually put forward before you everything that you want. And once you lose your humility, things will shift just so you can get back on that humility train. Prosper? Understandable. Well, thank you so much. That's a wealth of information. We might as well just end this um, episode right here. Ah. <laughs> Great stuff. So you did mention right at the beginning of your chat um, something about just the one thing. Uh, where I then just came up with a quote that it takes 21 years to become 21 years old. A lot of people are not patient enough to actually wait, um, you know, to see their business prosper or to see their business improve or to see their business grow. Now, what sort of advice would you give to somebody who's maybe just about starting and has just maybe picked up a couple of courses here and there and they think they have enough content and they have consumed enough to get on started and they're not seeing the results. So first of all, if you're that person, uh, congratulations. And I'm really excited for you. You've, you've made a decision. That's, a, that's an incredible step. Um, but second of all, you just have to remind yourself that um, how long it took me to mess up my, my credit or my finances or whatever the case may be. And I want you to match it with the same effort and time consistency to fix it, right? Um, it, it's like it's easy for us to gain weight. It's twice or three times as hard for us to lose it. That's just how things are. So good for you that you picked up a course. Good for you that you were saying, okay, you know, that person 
had had become successful so therefore if i use his or her formula i'm going to be successful as well it will not work you know but uh um very uh, results may vary that that is the 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 i i wish instead of it being a uh, just a, a small fine print i would like for it to be the main flyer results may vary and here is why each and every one of us you prosper myself we have a different uh, uh mechanism and different filters that are within us that create the activity that we do that create the 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 results that we're going to have it's a system that allows us to operate a certain way in other words 10 years ago ali Madawi did not wake up at uh, uh, 5 30 in the morning and you know smiled to the mirror and said <laughs> I am preparing for a record world-class interview at 6.15 in the morning, right? But my attitude has shifted over the last 10 years to get to the point where I look forward to events like these, right? My, my, my mindset is alert where naturally with no alarm clock, I just woke up with a smile like, oh, I'm ready for this one, right? So you too you have these filters and those filters are based on your level of education are based on your adversity that you had to overcome throughout your life are based on your religious belief on your political views or what you actually implement in your body itself and based on your input your your output is going to be exposed so how many of you notice at times there are some people who literally look for problems people who are like yeah but you know, gasoline prices are really expensive and taxes are really high. And I'm like, right, but we live in the same country and I seem to be doing fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure why you're pointing out, you know, that those things are bad and you're ignoring the other 80 things that are positive and great and available to you and I. So you got to understand that with consistency and a, a great sense of will. Now, willpower is not enough for itself to create whatever it is that you want to have. Willpower is definitely going to give you that first step. But just like an iceberg, willpower is only the tip. Everything else is hidden within. So you yourself have to be um, negotiating with yourself every single day. Is today the day that I'm going to quit? Not is the day the day that I'm going to be successful? Because we all ask that, that question. I, listen, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and hype it up. I've been very, very blessed over the last four, three and a half, four years out of the last 10. And I'm here to tell you that at times with some companies that I'm negotiating with or some prospects that I really want to do business with or, you know, a, a, a book deal that I'm working on or something like that and I get denied or I get you know, told no. Yeah, at the moment I'm like, I'm going to show you. But then when later on I'm sitting with my wife and I'm zoning out, you know, I'm like, man, did I really, like, should I just quit? Should I just try something else? Should I just put this one in the shelf and say, hey, it was nice trying you? I, I battle. Everybody battles with this. Like there's an IQ test. Well, IQ for me says for I quit. At what level is my I quit test telling me to give it up, right? So you have to keep digging within for every single thing that is physically available to you to make sure that you do not quit. And those things may be reading more books. Those things may be having a, a mentor, someone who actually is invested in your success invested in your well-being invested in whatever makes you great you know one thing that i believe in and one thing that a lot of people don't do and I, I, some of my mentors that i love even yelled at me for i don't have any price tag on any of my consultations or my coaching or my training whenever somebody says what do you charge i always say whatever your budget is and they say i can only afford this very minimum great let's work with that because I believe that, you know, sure, I got to pay bills. Sure, I too have to have uh, an income and, and, you know, make money for my services or, or products or anything that I have. But I also want to give that individual an opportunity and make sure that they understand it's not about me, it's about you. So how can I call myself your strategic partner if I'm working based on my needs, not your needs? So, so keep that consistency. Keep that sense of... Um, 
self-evaluation on a day-to-day -day basis. Wake up asking yourself, okay, based on what I did yesterday, should I get a raise or should I be fired? Because in your traditional job, in your traditional business, you do a 90-day evaluation, a six-month six evaluation, an annual evaluation where the manager sits down with the employee or, or, or you sit down with your employee and you say, okay, Prosper, let's see how you did in the last six months and let's see if there's any opportunities for us to increase your pay or let's see if the budgets allow us to increase your pay or, hey, we're going to have to cut down on some hours and we have to cut down on some this or some that. Ask yourself that question. Do I deserve a raise or should I even be fired? And based on that answer, it shouldn't be an emotional process that destroys your self-esteem. Rather, it should be a true self-evaluation. I need to do more. I need to give it a longer time. And here's what my man Gary Vee says, right? You got to match your ambition with time. That's great that you're excited and ambitious, right? But the highest level of ambition is the highest time that it's going to take you, right? Uh, every great person you can think of, they did not experience that success right away. I mean, think about every great name you can think of. I love watching biographies or reading about, you know, uh, Steve Jobs at, at the point that he became who he was and then his company got stripped away from him. And he had to go through a self-evaluation, went to India for about 10 months and, you know, had to do the Zen and, and relax and become a good human being, came back and became who he was. Uh, uh, Microsoft, Bill Gates, he was sued by Apple and many other companies and they almost took everything away from him. He almost sunk before he became successful because Apple was always ahead of the game with him. Right, I can give you name after name. Mahatma Gandhi. You think Mahatma Gandhi that people are building statues and using his quotes every day just woke up and said, "Okay, let me go and have a, a hunger strike." I'm that great. No, he had to go through his journey. Uh, Henry Ford. You know, he was being made fun of uh, that he's he's uh, uh, walking out with grease all over his hand from a garage at the age of 18. Yeah, he, this guy is gonna change the world with this machinery and wheels. Right, like he said, we're not going to need horses anymore. So your greatness is coming, but you have, there's a checklist of uh, sometimes it's an invisible checklist, but there's a checklist that has all this struggle, all this adversity, all these uh, uh, things that you have to go through. Right, and part of it is frustration. Part of it is uh, 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 temporary uh, loss, temporary failure. Uh, part of it is your own people not believing in your vision, not believing in your in your product, service, opportunity, or whatever you stand for. But unless you go through that checklist one by one, and uh, the last one when you you you, you click that momentum time, and then you sign your name and you can hang it as a certificate of greatness behind your wall. That's when you'll experience greatness. But again, unfortunately, we live in in a, a social media. Um, Snapchat, quick, uh, like, comment, build a network that way. If, I, if nobody is liking my picture, if I don't have 50 to 100 likes, I must be horrible. I must be bad. I must not have great content. How? You know, you just got to do it longer enough to figure out what you're doing wrong. And then eventually you realize, oh, okay, I figured this out. Let me try it another time. And then you figure out some more. And, and um, you know, out of my long-winded answer, I absolutely know for a fact that consistency and the, the, the will to go the distance will absolutely help you win. I mean, you can't, you know, as cliche as it sounds, but you can't lose if you don't quit. It's really that simple. You know, and for those of you who are excited about Bitcoin right now, everybody's talking about it, right? Like, I get a lot of people like, I want to get in Bitcoin, I want to get in Bitcoin. Like, okay, great. Make sure you study and make sure you have long-term thinking and make sure you have money that you're not going to need for your bills because here's what I'm going to tell you. What goes up must come down. So yes, as this, this boom is happening, at one point it goes back down and then it goes back up and it goes back down. And the funny thing is I see a lot of people, they think, I'm just going to get in. Once it goes up on another $1,000, I'm going to take my money up. And what if it goes down? So you have to understand that I gotta wait for a long term in order for me uh, um, to 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 win, and it's not an overnight success thing. You know, it, it took me ten years to become an overnight sensation. 
<laughs> Great stuff. And um, you see, we we can tell that there's been a lot of time uh, in, 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 in self-development, in learning and putting it all together because a lot of people that I've been asking to get on this show, Ali, as, 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 as funny as it may sound, have been turning me down only because I think it's, it's on them. They don't have the value to actually offer. And thank you so much for that. I'm that actually here, sir. puts it in perspective that, you know, you, <laughs> you, you really, really need to know your stuff. You really, really need to know where you're going and um, have, you know, the self-development to back it up. All, all together. Now, while you were talking, I'm just going to give you um, some space to to, to sure. have, a, have a drink and, and recover your voice there. You, Appreciate you, love. you also opened up a, um, a thought inside my head that we are now living in what I want to coin as the episode era. You know, you watch something within a 30 minute episode plus commercials where somebody gets born, um, they go to kindergarten, they go to high school, um, they graduate from college, they, they get engaged, they get married, um, they get 2.4 kids, and then they get promoted at work, and then they retire, then they start having a disease, and then they die, all in the space of a 30-minute episode. All right. Yep. So that is what I think is happening to our generation where they are now expecting everything to be instant gratification. Like you mentioned earlier on, if somebody does not reply to my message or tweet or retweet or resnap or re Facebook, whatever they're doing these days <laughs> of any of our stuff, people automatically think that um, they are, you know, th th they're not good enough. Now, in the sea of retweeting and putting stuff out there, there becomes a lot of noise online and there now becomes a need to stand out. One of the things that you actually focus on is branding. Now, how critical and how important is it for you to actually have either a personal brand or a business brand or some kind of brand? So now more than ever, if you don't have a brand, you're nothing but a salesperson. Now, no offense, or nothing against salespeople, right? Like, I just want to make sure that's clear. But just understand where you stand. If you want to be a salesperson, listen, salespeople are the number one earners in the world, right? Uh, Steve Jobs was not standing on stage and talking about the technicality of what the iPhone looked like from the inside. He was selling the thing. He was, look, when I do this, what happens? It can hold up to a million songs. Here's, he was a salesperson. So the greatest people in the world are salespeople. So please do not confuse my message. But what I am telling you is, if you're not good at sales, don't sell. Because you are exposed. If you are just acting like you're successful, you're a horrible actor. There's a reason you didn't make it to Hollywood. If you think by taking someone else's quote that made them viral and reposted in your wall and you're gonna go viral, it's not your quote. That's why people know who you are and what you stand for and what you are like. That's why they're like, that's not really you. And they're not reacting to it. So in a world of social media, we live in a social media age right now. You have a platform. It's, it's literally as if you have your own TV show in every social media platform that you are in. If you don't have a brand, you look like everybody else that is in social media. Guess what? Facebook has 4.2 billion members. 2.2 of them are actually in their phone, in their application 10 times a day. What makes you stand out? Why would I even bother talking to you? You're just some random dude on Facebook who's sending me a friend request who's got a, a positive food and a bunch of buy my product, buy my, buy my product. Yeah, and, I, and I see it all the time. So you have to have something that I want to say that makes you unique because you already are for who you are. But you have to have something that makes you stand out, something that people will remember. And I have four basic fundamentals that I'm going to share with you real quick in order for you to have a brand and stand out today and no it's not the logo on the website that's aesthetics that's the looks that's the, that's the clothes that you like you know do i want to wear black or white do i want to wear a shirt or, or or a sweater right that that's what the logo on the website but your brand itself is your promise that that's what makes me my brand right that's makes who i am 
So let's talk about it, right? So the very first thing is you have to have a vision and you'll be able to communicate it. So what do I mean? Let's say, Prosper, I tell you right now, hey, follow me. But when you look in front of what's in front of us, there is a very long tunnel. It's dark. You have no idea what's inside that tunnel. Or if a snake or a rat or something is going to come out of it, you don't even know how long it is. You may be afraid of darkness. So guess what? You're skeptical. You're afraid. You're doubting. You're like, I don't really know. I'm not sure if I want to go with you. I'm like, trust me, man. On the other side of the tunnel, we're going to be successful. We're going to have this. We're going to, and you're hesitating. That's what your prospects are doing all day long. They're hesitating. They may say things like, I'm really not sure if it's worth me spending the money right now. I'm really not sure if I can, I'll be able to win or succeed. I'm really not sure if I can do this or if I can do that. Now to you, you're like, oh, he's giving me or she's giving me objections. So let me get my sales on, right? But no, what they're telling you, I don't see your vision. So you have to be able to create that vision and communicate it so well that everybody, when you speak, they literally visually see where you're headed. And to develop a vision, A, you have to talk about why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. Not the cliche, here is my why, it's my kids, and I'm going to be rich and taken to the Disney work. No, genuinely, why am I selfishly doing what I'm doing? It, it, for, for me personally, what is my ultimate mission, right? The second thing is for your vision, how you are doing it, right? I'm doing it through A, B, C. I'm doing it through this product. I'm doing it through this or whatever it is, the how. And last but not least is the what. See, the problem is most of us talk about what. What do you do? I sell this and I sell this and I sell that. Great. Well, why are you doing it? Well, I've done it because about 15 years ago, I was homeless living in the streets. And that's in my case. You know, and I realized I had to do something with my life and then I couldn't find anything else to do. So I started selling stuff from home, you know, uh, 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 at one point of my life when I had a roof. And then little by little, I started figuring little by little out. And then uh, I realized only through hustling and being in control of my circumstance, of my situation, I can actually do something great. And I started teaching other people to do it. So I decided to build a consultant and a marketing firm. Now, I could have from the very beginning say consultant and marketing firm, but because it started with homeless and the struggle that I've gone through, it built a little bit of a visual for you of an emotional uh, uh, path. It's got to be real or genuine. People are going to read through you if you're making stuff up. And then here is how I started selling stuff. I started finding stuff and reporting it on eBay. I started collecting scrap metal and going to the scrap yard and selling it for a few dollars here and there. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I have enough to rent a truck. And then when I got a truck, I said, oh my goodness, there's this thing called Craigslist and I can find free uh, uh, washers and dryers. And then I started picking them up and going back and forth. Oh my God, I got a business going on in here. And then I said, let me just teach everybody all these solutions. And I became consultants. So, so when you go through that journey of why, how, and what, people are going to see it before they actually uh, doubt or have the, 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 the fears that they have with it. So vision is number one. Number two is what culture are you developing? What does that mean? Um, and the way I coach this part here is close your eyes for a second and imagine yourself speaking in front of 5,000 people. And you're speaking on whatever passion that you have. Or, and then as you're walking out from the side of the stage, you have a few people coming to you and asking you to take pictures and asking you questions. Who do you envision yourself in that very same moment talking to? And whomever you are dreaming of in the moment, thinking about you're talking to, that's your actual demographic that you're supposed to be talking to. That's who you relate to the most. That's who you're going to impact the most. So write whatever that answer is down. That's your demographic. So if you're thinking uh, parents, uh, if you're thinking uh, a young couple, if you're thinking whatever comes to mind, that is the culture that you're building. And people like to be part of something. So if you have a culture, you're going to attract the right demographic. The problem is there's many people who, for example, if me and you prosper right now, say, hey, let's open a steak company. Let's start, start selling the best steaks in the world, filet mignon, you name it, every cut. And then we're like, okay, this is awesome. Let's go and tell the world. 
and then we're waving our stakes and sending all these flyers and let's say, oh my God, Prosper, you know that India has a billion people in it and we go to the heart of India and we're like, my goodness, there's a billion people just for me and you right now. And then we realize that half of that billion do not eat red meats. And the city that we are in, in are 100% vegan. And does it really matter now how great of a steak you and I have? It's irrelevant because we're in the wrong demographic. We're in the wrong culture that does not actually belong in what we do. So you got to identify your culture. Number three is, and this is where most people struggle, what problem do you and only you solve? What problem do you and only you solve? Most people don't even know how to answer that question. Or they get to, well, I can help you. Uh, find the best version of you. I can help you figure out your budget. I can help you this. Yeah, that's all great I can go to YouTube and get it for free. I Don't I don't need you to tell me what to do with my life. There's Tony Robbins. That's better than you There's Les Brown. That's much more experienced than you There's all these great gurus of the world that I can get access to Virtually and I can get 30 years of their life in video and I can get it all So what problem do you and only you solve? That's, a, that's, a, that's the million dollar question that you can build a brand with. So here is my answer to that to help every single individual. What struggle have you gone through throughout your whole life and are you willing to talk about it and teach people how to never go through those problems or get themselves out of it? See, your path of struggle and adversity is your IP address. No one can compete with it. Les Brown and Tony Robbins and Darren Hardy and, and Zig Ziglar and, and all the greats in the world cannot compete with who I am and what I have gone through. See, when I was five years old, I was molested as a child, and it kept me messed up and scarred my whole life. I didn't talk about it until I was 27 years old. When I was nine years old, my father left us and left me with this emotion that I'm hated, that my, the man that's supposed to protect me and love me did not want me in his life. And I grew up angry at that. At the age of 13, my mother left when we, were, we grew up and we were raised in Morocco. She left and came to the United States. And as a teenager, oh my God, my mother does not like me and she hates me. What, am I, what have I done that's so wrong that no one wants to be with me, right? Amongst my older brother, my younger sister, and my younger brother at the same time. So we stayed with my father at the time and my stepmom. And guess what? We were not the favorite kids in the house, let's just say the least, right? To one point that I ended up in the streets for three years. And then ask yourself a question, what have I done to be a teenager in the streets that no one wants? So I grew up with this fear, victimized, horrible, uh, uh, um, hurt, uh, abused mindset that when I was lucky enough and, and my mother, got us out of Morocco and brought us, you know, and by the way, my father is back into my life. My stepmom is back into my life. Now I have a stepdad. So I got buy one, get one free. I got two parents. I'm that excited, right? So, so in that period, it was what I call my dark ages, right? And then I come to the United States at the age of 16, 17. And I'm like, all right, here I am, America. I got this covered. And then at the age of 19, I get suicidal and I attempt suicide. And then clearly I made it. The, the man above said, no, 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 not yet, my man. And then I, I get married to the woman of my, my, my dreams at the age of 22. And guess what? I made our first year of marriage hell. I mean hell because guess what? What well, my head was at the whole time. She's going to leave me. She's going to, to, to hurt me like everybody did. She's going to lie to me. So every little thing, I was so paranoid and I created problems, you know? And then thank God we figured out enough to just make it through that first year. And then at the age of 24, I start my first, you know, traditional businesses and everything is all gravy and great and working out for all of us. And guess what happens? It was a major hurricane. You guys can look it up. Hurricane Sandy that happened here in the United States. Yeah. I lost everything. I had a house, cars, and all this stuff, all lost. So guess what? I started doubting my faith in that moment. Like, God, what? Do I really deserve this? I mean, I'm doing everything right. And God said, I picked you for a reason. There's greatness within you, right? Yes, you are supposed to go through this. Because guess what? After I've gone through all that and the right opportunities came into my life, I, I look back at my whole life. See, I wouldn't be the parent that I am to my two-month-old baby and be in a full time from the moment I wake up till I go to sleep at home with my child had I not gone 
through that experience as the five-year-old that I was. I would not be so relentless and get my wife out of her job a year and a half ago and myself to say, we'll never go back to a job. Nothing because we don't want to work, but because we want to be in the life of my child. So he never feels that pain that I had as what well, am I might not love, am I might not cared for, right? If I did not go through that experience of where, where my older brother and I ended up in, in the streets of Morocco and had to figure out our life, I wouldn't be the entrepreneur that I am because I had to figure out how to sell. I had to figure out how to make food. I had to figure out how to hustle for my life. I wouldn't have learned five languages because in Morocco I had to speak to different tourists so I can sell them stuff all the time. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to become the entrepreneur and, and the visionary that I am if everything that I had wasn't stripped away from me when I was uh, going through the, the, the craziness with Hurricane Sandy. So tell me, Mr. Prospect or Mrs. Prospect, who do you know that has gone through all this and is here in front of you saying life is amazing and I know for a fact I can help you go through the pain that you're going through too. Wow. wow. Here is the fact. The problem that you solve is your story. No one can compete with you in that. I can't compete with the struggle and the adversity that you've gone through. So feel empowered. Accept your perfect flaws because we all have perfect imperfections and just open up about it because whatever you've gone through and overcome is now a responsibility to share it with people. You must share it with other people because you just don't know who else is going through that pain. The last piece to Brandon, and this is relevant to you, not so much to your audience, what is your budget? If you don't have a budget, you're not operating like a company. There's a reason when you go to networking events and can't afford a $300 to $1,000 coach or, or something like that is because if the year prior you were putting away $100 a month, by the end of that year, you would have $1,200 in your pocket and you can reinvest it in your lights and your studio and your microphones, whatever it is. But because you did not make a business decision to have a budget, not necessarily spending, an actual money saving budget and you can spend it however you see fit throughout the year, that's when you'll actually be able to do things that are appropriate and fiscally responsible that is. So that's my four pieces to build a brand and it's extremely simple if you actually put down a blueprint and, and, and create it and um, that's what we did for ourselves. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna take on from that little bit that you just mentioned about the story because thank you so much once again for sharing your own story because that that was powerful and moving in the same um you know in the same motion in as much as i would kind of relate to parts of that having come in from zimbabwe and i see the flag and trying to establish here in australia and you know going around um, it, it's not as easy as people would see uh, sitting over here and you know creating this um, you know, empire that we're trying to create here. And what you've just brought out here has become proof positive that um, if you're watching this, um, this episode right now, thank you so much for watching this far. Obviously, there's something, there's something that you've seen, something between uh, me and Ali that has brought two big minds, especially um, to provide all this value for you. And now it's your turn because your life story and your life experience have great importance and market value than you probably ever dream of. Okay. You're here to make a difference in the world. And the best way to actually do that is to package your knowledge and um, advice on any topic. Like you can hear what um, Ali is, is saying and is, is, is elaborating here or in any industry to actually help other people succeed. Now, as you would know, in this episode, we go by, um, you know, the, values of leave um learn and contribute we're here to live a life all right and then in the process of us leaving we've got to learn enough for us to be able to contribute to the rest of the other people and if you're going to be putting your story out there and your brand is well uh tuned and well tailored you are automatically not being a selfish individual that is actually going to be out there to serve other people, um, you know, to get away from whatever calamity they might be going through. So 
as you can hear from what Ali is saying, you can literally get paid for sharing your advice, your how-to information, and in the process, you can actually build a lucrative business that is profoundly helpful to other people and is meaningful to you as an individual. Now, Ali, you know, in, 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 in the... In the interest of the audience that's probably sitting on here they're probably wondering who is this guy and how can we get a hold of him what's the best way that somebody can be in touch with you ali and maybe just touch the ham and <laughs> some of that knowledge that you have may rub off off of them um so that they too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable so so here's where i'm going to drive most people crazy um so while everybody is chasing the next gig while everybody's chasing. I actually, 90% uh, of what I do every day is giving away complimentary consultations. I literally give away 30 minutes after 30 minutes. You can go to my calendar and you can pick a 30 minute complimentary session. It's workwithali.com forward slash schedule. It's workwithali.com forward slash schedule. One of the uh, time slots says complimentary session <laughs> and, uh, you know, take some time for yourself and you can tell me whatever you need help with. Uh, I don't care what company, what product, what service, if you want to be an author, if you want to be an actor, whatever it is that you want to do, right? I'm here to help. And, and the reason I say I'm going to drive people insane because most people, when they say, I want to be this and I want to be that, I'm like, good, what are you willing to give away? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you, you, you want to be a coach, right? How much coaching you want to give away? And they're like, well, no, I want to get paid on it. I'm like, right, eventually, but how much are you willing to give away? See, give and you shall receive. Not when I receive, then I'll give. That's not how it works. So um, uh, for, for the last three and a half years that we specifically have been focusing on consulting companies, and, and we're so blessed, I mean, we just partnered up with Six Sigma, and if anybody knows who Six Sigma is, it's a global conglomerate in the coaching space. So, you know, they're literally my partner in a project uh, that I'm working on uh, right now as we speak. So, um, give. If you want to be a coach, get on Facebook and start giving complimentary live Facebook training as if you are getting paid $5,000 for that session. You can look me up in every platform. Literally, I give everything away, you know, and, and the so-called coaches of the world kind of get mad at me when I do that, and I don't care, you know, and here's why. I'm ruining the business. I'm giving away all the secret sauce. Well, guess what? See, I'm giving you the secret sauce is because I have a whole kitchen behind me, and then eventually, when you're ready, at your own ease, with your own budget, with your own project, I'll partner up with you in your own, whatever it is that you're doing, and I'll build it with you as if it was my own. So that's the way we've been operating. So this is what we're giving away uh, like throughout the whole day. You go to the calendar and you book it. Um, social media is my best friend. I am not Mark Zuckerberg, but I made a whole lot of money out of his company. I'll tell you that. So, um, you know, connect with me in every social media outlet. You can just you know, Google search Ali Medawi, M-E-H-D-A-O-U-I, and then you'll be able to literally find me in every platform. Connect and not connect with me just because of the sake of being a follower, just so I have a new like or anything like that. No, because every social media platform has a different language, and I want you to copy and paste. I want you to steal what I'm doing and apply it for yourself. You know, if you're on LinkedIn, don't put hashtags. If you're on Instagram, imagery and video is key. And the way it has to be bright, the way it has to be concise, the way it has to be unique. If you are on Facebook, engage with videos now. That's the hot thing that is happening right now. Snapchat, absolutely have fun with it. Utilize it, right? Uh, uh, Tumblr, Pinterest, 80% of Pinterest audience is women. A closing ratio in Pinterest is over 40% if you have the right product, obviously, and the right strategy. So while everybody's ignoring Pinterest, my books, most of my books got sold in Pinterest, you know, so, so make sure that you are connecting with me just so you can take what I'm doing and apply it for yourself. You never have to talk if we don't need to, but make sure you do that just, just for your own sake. And last is workwithali.com where 
you can find it all in one space. Understandable. Well, I know we could sit down here and book yet another session in your schedule. Another 30 minutes, another 30 minutes, another 30 minutes. Um, but obviously the viewer might just be sitting here and a little bit overwhelmed because as they were probably drinking off a fire hose. You are a legend in the making, has been and shall be. And thank you so much for your time, especially today. And I can see the energy, the passion and the drive that will actually move mountains. All you just need right now is firm ground to stand on and actually start moving things. Thank you so much there, Ali. I appreciate you and I'm ready to rock. It's only 7.15 in here, so can you imagine how my day is going to be now? I am so fired up. <laughs> Great stuff. Now in the audience there, you might um, be sitting there and just thinking, how do I get to those levels? What do I do uh, to actually just really be passionate and be enthusiastic about everything else that I'm doing? What am I missing out on? All of those questions are valid. All of those questions are you trying to come and become. We are here to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I think in the future, I'm just going to say this now, me and Ali are supposed to be doing a couple of episodes together every single week if we can tie up the time so that we can actually discuss one particular topic at a time so that it's not as overwhelming, but there is content that we can put out there. Ali, let's uh, talk about this and let's actually anticipate, let the audience anticipate we can actually come up with something like this um, that we can sure. be giving out uh, content each and every, um, you know, maybe every week or so, right? I am here to serve. You let me know what you need and I'm at your service. Thank you so much. Now, you know, have you ever thought about how things would be like if you had your own brand with your own products and with your own services? And can you actually imagine how life would be like, you know, if you had a business plan or, you know, you had a strategic team that actually makes you the center of the creation of the main event. Guys like Ali are there to help you. I'm going to be putting all his details at the bottom there so that you guys can contact him, especially that he's offered um, his 30 minute free consultation. Take advantage of that. Learn from him because you never know where that strategic partnership might lead you to. Thank you so much, Ali, for having us on the show today. Absolutely. And guys, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Come on now. <laughs> subscribe. Thank you so much. Right. <laughs> oh.